Yo, what's up, y'all? It's the MMA Analyst here to do my preview slash predictions video for Dream 8. Um, really looking forward to this card in particular. Like I said before, in my update video, I'm really looking forward to the potential of Andre Galval versus Shinya Aoki. But uh, before we get to that, we got to get through this card. Uh, the card's filled with a lot of mismatches and whatever, whatnot. Let me just say it like this. The reason why you can have these situations with guys that have like 7 and 11 records and guys that have like 2 and 5 and 1 and 3 and all types of craziness all on the same card and then those guys are fighting big pit bull style type dudes is because in Japan it's kind of like they don't care about wins and losses. It really doesn't come down to wins and losses. Over here we focus on who's the champ, we focus on you know who won 5 fights in a row. Focus on who did you beat last. In Japan, they focus on like the warrior spirit. It sounds kind of cheesy and stuff, but like mixed martial arts is mixed martial arts. But like over there, it's martial arts. And martial arts is about the warrior. And and it's about like, you know, it's, it's, it's just about like being like, just being like, just fighting and just moving forward. And you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? So... The card is, a lot of cards in Japan, they have, like, different outlooks. They have different ways of going. Like, the freak show stuff, for example. When they have freak show fights, like, in Japan, where they put, like, Minowa men up against, like, all types of big giants and whatever, whatnot, they recognize that it's, like, entertainment. It's not about, like, can Minowa man win? It's more, and if he does, like, he's the champ because he beat, you know, Giant Silva or... Zuluzinho or Butterbean, it's more like, you know, will he fight, you know, through his Goliath, and if he wins, great, if he loses, he, he's still a warrior, over here, when they do freak show events, it's like, they put him at, like, the main event sometimes, and they'll be like, this guy here is fighting this guy, and it's your main event, and the winner has, like, done so much with the win, well, we all know it's like, that's some cheesiness, that's, that win didn't mean anything, but over there, they know the win doesn't mean anything when it comes to, like, you know, you know, the fighter being, like, elevating in rankings or anything like that. But anyway, just a little preview, or just, a, not a preview, like, a, like a little pre-video, well, actually, it's in the video, what the hell am I talking about? Look, Dream 8. I'm only going to talk about some of the more important uh, matches, and the other ones I'm just going to pick the winner. Um, Vitor Ribeiro versus Nagata. Um, this is one of the situations I was talking about. Nagata, uh, he, in his second fight, he lost to Akiyama. Uh, it, he lost to Kao Uno. He was, uh, what, 4-2 and two when he fought Aoki, and he got Gogo plotted. Did I just go off the damn... He got Gogo plotted, and then, uh, you know, he's 4-4 four four now. He's basically, he's facing Vitor, Shaolin, Ribeiro. This is a fight for Vitor to come back and win. That's what this is for. Uh, Ribeiro's a beast. He's been fighting dudes, tough guys for a long time. 19 wins, 2 losses, 12 submissions. He's got some big wins. I don't really need to get into it too deep, y'all. Just... I mean, I want to for those who don't understand who Vito Ribeiro is. However, if you don't know who he is, it's better to just find the fights, YouTube it, internet style, Google, find it out, handle your business, get it done. Vito Ribeiro, Vito Ribeiro is the man, or at least he's one of the men. All right. Next fight, Jeff Monson against uh, Sergey Karatanov. Jeff Monson, if y'all don't know what his like who the guy is, he just got in trouble for like spray painting on like uh, American like monuments and the craziness and like gonna get fined and this guy's crazy. Anyways, um, he's a he's a ADCC uh, um, submission wrestle champion. Um, 28 wins, eight losses. He's got a lot of big, uh, a lot of big fights. Um, a couple big wins. He uh, he fought for the UFC heavyweight title against Tim Silver, and he lost that. Um, 
he 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 fought again against Pedro uh, Hizo um, for uh, for another title. He lost that one. He lost Josh Barnett and Sengoku. Um, he lost to Chuck Liddell like back in two thousand. I think damn two thousand. Uh, he lost to Forrest Griffin, um, uh, Rico Rodriguez, but uh, he's got some wins, um, so, some pretty good, good wins. He's got a win over Brandon Lee Hinkle. He's got wins over Rodriguez, Mark Kerr, Roy Nelson. And, like, his most impressive moment right now is the fact that he fought on March 21st, 2009. He won by decision, so he went 15 minutes. And March Badness, which was like a boxing and MMA card. Some stuff happened on that. Like you had like uh, Dudu Guida versus, uh, I shouldn't have said Dudu Guida. Um, Clay Guida, uh, his sibling, against um, Bobby Lashley. And then you had like Roy Nelson versus Jeff Monson. And, you know, anyways... And then you had, you had uh, what's his name, Roy Jones Jr. fighting on that as the main event. Anyways, y'all, why am I even talking about that? Look, he fought on March 21st, 2009. Then he fought eight days later. Okay, and then he won in the second round by Anaconda Choke. And then he's fighting six days later. So between March 21st, 2009 and April 5th, he will have fought three times. And the third fight is the most difficult one for him. It's not like he's taking a break. So he had to train for for Roy Nelson, which is a tough fight. Then he got a little break, but is that really a break when you got a fight? Eight days later, and then he's fighting Sergey Karatanov. So he must just be in one long training session. Anyways, Sergey Karatanov, tough dude. Uh, he's got uh, 16 wins, three losses. Um... He's got a win and a loss to Alistair Overeem. His only other loss came to Alexander Emelianenko and Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira back in 2004. He's got wins over Pedro Hizzo, Fabricio Verdum. Um, I mean, Murillo, uh, Ninja Hua, Stemby Schilt. The dude is for real. This is going to be a great fight. Um, I'm going to go with Sergey Karatanov, either a by uh, by uh, um, by knockout or b by decision because uh, I don't think he'll get submitted by uh, by Monson. All right, now we've got uh, Marilla Ninja uh, uh, Hua against Dong Sik Yoon. Uh, go through this one quick. Dong Sik Yoon, um, tough situation for my man. He started out 0 and 4. His first fight in MMA history was against Kazushi Sakuraba. He got beat up in 38 seconds. Then came back and he fought Makoto Takimoto and went to the decision. Still lost. Then he went and fought Quentin Rampage Jackson to a decision. Lost. Then he fought Marillo Bustamante to a decision. Lost. 0-4. Then they put him up against Melvin Manhoof and he wins. Then he fights Zell Galasic and he wins. Then he has two fights in the middle. And then he fights Regard Musasi. Musasi is a beast. Loses. And then he loses to Andrew Nakahara. Four and six. I mean, warrior, whether he wins or whether he loses. Warrior spirit. Murillo, Ninja Hua. Um, up and down all the way through his career. 16 wins, nine losses. Um, recently, he's got a loss to Benji Raddick. Um, he lost to Robbie Lawler before that. Um, he beat Xavier uh, Fupa, uh, basically Professor X, who's going to be fighting Dennis Kang in UFC 97. Anyways, he beat Tony Bonello. Bonello is now beating up people on the Bully Beatdown, which is a funny-ass show with Mayhem Miller. Check that out if you've never heard of it. It's somewhat entertaining. Basically, they go to like different places. I don't know if they're acting because, like, a lot of times these guys look like bad actors who are acting like bullies. But anyways, they basically roll up. They're like, yo, man, you like to bully people? Why don't we pay you $10,000 to step in a cage with a real F fighter? And then they get their ass beat. Anyways, he's uh, he, Marillo uh, Rua beat Joey Villasenor. 
Mark Weir in a crazy, funny-ass fight where he got rocked, like, multiple times, and Mark Weir should have won that fight. And you turn your head, you, you say, what the hell, Mark Weir lost by by triangle? Arm triangle? Anyways, Marillo, uh, he lost Dennis Kang, Paulo Filho, Quentin Rampage Jackson in a fight where Rampage tried to give him the, the like, little trophy after he's like, I didn't win this fight. It was a split decision. Uh, he lost to Sergey Karatanov. He basically fought tough guys his whole career. Dan Henderson was his first loss. Ricardo Arona was his second. Kevin Randleman was his third. Very tough fights for his entire career. Um, he gets knocked out easily now. I think he's been knocked out maybe two or three too many times. Um, we'll see what happens in this fight, though. If he loses this fight right here, this fight right here, if he loses this fight right here, then uh, this fight right here, this fight right here, for any of y'all out there, y'all don't talk about. I'm not even going to say what that. This fight right here, this fight right here, if he loses this fight right here, then he needs to really, really, really think about what's going on in his career. All right. Now we've got uh, Oyama, Shungo Oyama versus Andrew Nakahara. When I was talking about um, Warrior Spirit, this is what I was talking about. Either this guy likes getting paid or he likes getting his ass whooped. He fought Vanderlei Silva in his third fight in his career back in 2001. A few fights later, Henzo Gracie and he beat him. Then they said, okay, now fight Ryan Gracie. He lost to Ryan Gracie. Then he fought Dan Henderson next fight. Lost. In the first round, TKO punches. Then he fought. His next fight was against Mirko Krokop back in 2004. Not 2009 Krokop, which we haven't seen. But it probably won't be much better than 2008 Krokop. Definitely not 2008 Krokop. He fought 2006, 2004 Krokop. Got his ass whooped. Then he came back. Put him up against uh, Melvin Manhoof. Got his ass cut up. Then he fought Melvin Manhoof again. And then he got his ass knocked uh, in, in, into La La Land. It's just he's had a tough situation in his MMA career. He has beat... Um, Rodrigo Gracie, he beat Carlos Newton, um, who just had a recent win, and actually Melvin Mann, who just had a recent loss. Anyways, he actually heel hooked Peter Ertz, a kickboxer. But anyways, this guy's had some tough situations. He's fighting Andrew Nakahara, who was 1-1. One one. Um, his first fight was against Kazushi Sakuraba, and uh, he lost that, and then he came back and he beat Dong Sik Yoon. I'm going to go with Andrew Nakahara, guys. I'm going to say first. Uh, uh, he's going to be get a second win in the first round. All right. Now we've got uh, Minowa Man versus Shibata. Um, Shibata is 2-5. and five, And his fights have been against Kazushi Sakuraba, uh, Helic Gracie, um, Jason Mayhem Miller, which was a nasty, one of the biggest beatdowns in 2008. Uh, Akiyama and Hayato Sakurai. So again, sending these dudes to slaughter over and over again and actually getting slaughtered. He'll be facing uh, Minowa Man. Minowa Man is basically, if you can find me a guy who's fought like seven foot giants more than this guy, then you know what I mean? Congratulations. Like, Or just like people who weigh over 350 pounds. Um, he's got 41 wins, 29 losses, 26 of his wins came by submission. Um, just to say, like, who he's fought, he fought Don Fry, big guy. Errol Zimmerman, he beat, big guy. Both of those guys, um, big guys. And then he fought Zulu Zinho. Now, I'm not saying Zulu is a champ, but I'm definitely saying Zulu Zinho is big. All right? Minowa, man, weighs 181 pounds. All right? Uh... This Zulu Zinho cat, I think he might be like 450. Let me take a real quick look. You know he can't step on any real scale. They're going to say 390 pounds, right? So he fought him. He fought um, Eric Esch. That's Butterbean. For y'all who, you know, for those who don't know Butterbean's real name. Uh, that's 416 pounds for Butterbean. He bought, fought Giant Silva. I'm just going through the freak show ones, because that's what this guy is. He comes out and fights the freak shows. 385 pounds, 7 feet, 2 inches. All right? Um, he's fought Phil Baroni, beat him, lost to him. Kimo Leopoldo, 
Also a big guy, Gilbert Ivel. Beat him with a toe hold. Beat a man with a toe. You're going to grab somebody by his toe? Um, St St uh, Stefan Lecco is a kickboxer. Beat him. Lost to Vanderlei Silva. Lost to Quentin Rampage Jackson back in 2004, back in Pride. Um, lost to Ricardo Almeida. Just fights. Lots of fights. He'll fight anybody. Big, small, fought Sammy Schilt. He actually lost to Sammy Schilt by Superman Punch. That's a big man. So if you get hit by a Sammy Schilt Superman Punch, you are definitely going to lose. Anyways... Minowan Man should not have an issue in this fight. Um, he should take this win. Um, Hideo Takoro, <clears throat> I've got him beating uh, Daiki Hata. Um, then we've got the Welterweight Grand Prix uh, first round matches. <clears throat> I'm going to pick Jason High, who recently was actually uh, knocked out by... Um, Damn, it was that affliction. Anyways, he was recently knocked out in like the first minute, like a minute, three seconds. I was there. It was after the Fedor fight. I was still in a daze. He must have been too because he got knocked out fast. But he actually trains with Body Shop under uh, Antonio McKee. McKee is a crazy dude. Like 23 wins, 22 wins, three losses since 2000. Since 1998, hasn't lost a fight since 2003. He's a wrestler. Out of his 22 wins, 17 have gone to decision. So a lot of guys don't like watching him, but he is effective. And he's teaching a lot of young up-and-comers. He's got a lot of guys coming up under him. Much respect to Antonio McKee. Anyways, um, I've got him. I've got Jason High beating uh, Yuya Shirai. And I've got uh, Marius uh, Zeromskis uh, beating uh, Seki Aikimoto. All right, down to the main two fights on the card. John Alessio versus uh, Andre Galvao. John Alessio, um, he's been fighting since 1998. <clears throat> he's got uh, 24 wins, 12 losses, 8 by submission, 8 by knockout. Um, he's recently coming off a loss to Paul Daly. He's beat Gideon Ray, Pete Spratt. So those are two... Uh, two uh, They've been in the game for a long time. That's what I'm trying to say. Two veterans. That's the word. Um, also, two guys that were on the Ultimate Fighter TV show. Anyways, uh, Brock Larson. He lost to Brock Larson in WC. He spent a little bit of time in the WC. He lost to uh, Carlos Condit, um, who just damn lost last night. Effed up my picks. Sure did F up my picks, man. I was going 8 no until... The last two fights. And then, bam, hit up with... <sighs> Anyways, y'all. Lost to Tiago Alves. Lost to Diego Sanchez. His UFC showings for John Alessio have not been good. Um, he's made his UFC debut against Pat Militech back in 2000. Lost there. Lost to uh, Joe Dirksen. Lost to Egan Inui. Beat Thomas Denny. Uh, lost to Jason Black, lost to John Goulet, beat Savant Young. He's just been up and down, up and down all throughout his career. Now he's going to be fighting Andre Galvao, world champion in jiu-jitsu. Very, very strong physical build. Young guy, very dedicated. Two wins. The people he fought were 9-5 and five and 9-4 and four when he fought them. And his first fight and his second fight, I had the pleasure of meeting him, interviewing him, training with him for a week, and uh, actually calling one of his fights, his second fight. Um, Andre Galvao, if he takes his fight to the ground, obviously it's over. Whenever he decides to stand and trade and, like, really dedicates to it, like, he does well. So if he can come out there and shake off the early rust, because he always comes out kind of, he's only fought twice, but both times he's been questioning his hands and then he goes oh f it and then he actually throws connects and then they have to respect his punching and then since they respect his punching then he gets taken down and then it's over i'm gonna go with andre galvao realizing that he's in a fight about two minutes into the fight and then winning somewhere in the within the fourth minute into the fight 
Yo, so obviously the first rule in like making decisions for like predictions and whatever whatnot is don't go with your heart. F all that. When you got favorite fighters and it's like this, like it's close. You know, if your favorite fighter is Tito Ortiz and he's fighting Fedor, well, you know, sorry, dude, your dude's gonna lose. But when it's like Shinya Aoki fighting, uh, fighting Sakurai, I'm rooting for for Shinya Aoki, and uh, and I'm putting my stuff on Shinya Aoki. Oh, that didn't sound right. But then again, he did have those crazy pictures with. Uh, I don't even want to bring that up. Don't ever look at those pictures, y'all. Anyways, what do we need to say about both these guys? Shinya Aoki is one of the best. He's my favorite, uh, maybe my third favorite fighter in the world behind Fedor and uh, hmm, Tyra Banks looking good. Oh, damn. He's interviewing somebody ugly as hell. And she's crying. I hope I didn't disrespect anybody. All right. Um, Aoki, basically, he fights tough guys. He fights easy guys and he goes back and forth he's just getting his paychecks getting his record up there handling his business 2008 he had an amazing year and he would have been fighter of the year in my opinion if he would have beat Joaquin Hansen but he didn't actually Eddie Alvarez would have beat fighter wouldn't have been fighter of the year if he wouldn't have got injured and he would have fought Aoki yeah whoever would have won that fight definitely would have been fighter of the year but anyways um Alvarez got injured and then ended up fighting Alvarez later, but Shinya Aoki had already lost, and then Aoki beat Alvarez, which means he lost, and then that was that. Fight of the year goes to somebody else. Anyways, Hayato Sakurai, on the other hand, actually has a win over Aoki. Um, this fight is a welterweight fight, so it's not at Aoki's 155 where he is basically the number two guy. A lot of guys want to say number one guy, but BJ Penn is still 155, and he still hasn't lost since, like, you know, 2003 or something like that at 155. And even Aoki says that BJ Penn's the number one at 155. But anyways, Hayato Sakurai has not had an impressive win since his win... Um, over Joaquin Hansen back in 2005. Since then, he's lost to uh, Takenori Gomi. He's lost to David Barron. And then he's beat Olaf Alonso, a very small at the time, Mac Danzig, um, Hironaka, and Shibata. So this is a big fight for him. Whoever wins this fight um, should go all the way in the tournament. Uh, into the last round. Oh, damn, I just dropped my mic. Wow. Ain't that a shame. Technical difficulties. Anyways, whoever wins this fight, I personally hope that they face each other in the next round because I don't want to have to wait <clears throat> two months, three months for it to happen. I don't want any freak accidents to happen either. Andre Galvao, let's say he has to face the winner of like Yuya Shirai and Jason High. I wouldn't want Jason High to like hit him with like a hook or something crazy and all of a sudden Galvao's out of the tournament and then Aoki just gets to tap people left and right all the way to the end of this uh, welterweight Grand Prix. I want Aoki versus Galvao next round. Anyways, y'all, MMA, y'all know it's important. I'll be back this Saturday to do my preview for the Strike Force on April 11th, and then I'll be back like the day after that to do the preview, or maybe before that, for UFC 97, which I'll be there. I'm bringing my camera bring them out whatever, see what I can do. I've already got my seats. My seats are good ones this time. This place is going to be packed. You got to pick your battles. You can't try and be a miracle worker. You know what I mean? You got to know when to bring your guns and, and when to bring your funds. You know what I mean? MMA, it's important, y'all. Peace.